It's good to see you. Today, we're going to get a panda to show up in augmented reality by using a marker. To start, you'll first need a few things to be set up. This includes having Node.js installed, Windows Firewall turned off, and knowing your local IP address. My video on setting up a local server gets you most of the way there for this project. You'll also need a way to set up certificates and private keys for messages. I have another video which walks you through those steps. If you've already seen them, you are ready to start. Let's open up File Explorer and navigate to the folder with our local server. We're going to edit our index.html file first. Right click and open this with your preferred text editor. You may use Windows built-in notepad if you don't have one. I will be using Visual Studio Code. It's free, and there will be a link in the description if you want to use it too. To make this panda show up, we're going to be using an open source tool called A-Frame. A-Frame is a non-native JavaScript tool with features that support experiences in extended reality. By non-native, I mean it doesn't come stock with JavaScript. We need to import it. And extended reality, or XR, is a term that encompasses augmented reality, virtual reality, and everything on the spectrum in between. To import a frame, we'll use the script tag inside our head tag. Tags are the things between the carrots. Each release of a frame is currently hosted on their aframe.io website. Today we'll be using 1.3.0. In the future, you may want a newer release. A good way to check the current release version is on the A-Frame GitHub page under Releases. I left a link to it in the description. To use A-Frame, we'll also need to import a part of something called AR.js. AR.js is, like A-Frame, a non-native JavaScript tool. AR.js focuses on augmented reality features. And in our case, we only need to import the parts that have to do with A-Frame. What is this raw.githack website I'm typing? Sounds kind of suspicious. Raw.githack.com is a tool to deliver source code from trusted places like GitHub in a proper format. This tool is helpful in situations like ours importing non-native JavaScript tools into our app. With A-Frame and AR.js tools set up, it's time to use them. Let's update our title to something new like Meet an AR Panda. Then, let's remove everything between the body tags. First, let's set up a scene. The A hyphen prefix here means it's something coming from A-Frame. The scene is what we put all of our A-Frame stuff in. Next. Let's say that there should be a marker in our scene. A marker is an image that the 3D model will appear on. We're going to use this preset hero marker for now. Maybe someday I'll make a tutorial on using custom markers. Now it's time to add our panda object to the scene. Here we use the a entity tag within the marker tag. This lets us describe the properties of the entity we want to appear and how it should appear in relation to the marker. The position is x, y, and z coordinates. If we used zero for the y, our height coordinate, our model might appear half inside the marker and half outside of it. Using 0.5 or one half for the Y, if the model we get is properly set up, it should all appear above the marker. Scale is how big it should be. Settings like these are dependent on a lot of variables and will vary depending on things like your preference and the size of the model you're working with. For now, we'll start with half scale for all values. Rotation, we will set to negative 90 degrees on the x direction, and no rotation on the others. This rotation will be great for a marker on a vertical surface, like a screen or a wall. Lastly, we have to tell A-Frame what model we're going to use. We can use Sketchfab, an online resource for 3D models, and many of them are free. Let's search Sketchfab for some pandas. Hmm, sure are a lot of options. Let's be sure to pick a good one. Ooh, look at this fella. Even has the toe beans. There's a Creative Commons attribution. Looks like we can use it. I left the link to this 3D model in the description. Click on Download 3D Model, 
Sketchfab does require a login. A Sketchfab account is free if you want to create one, and if not, you can use your own 3D model for this part. Once signed in, we can select our download type. We are going to choose GLTF. GLTF is a new type of object format that can sometimes be used to hold a lot more information than its alternatives. Once downloaded, right click and extract the file. Select the folder with your web server files. Go into a folder that can store files accessed by the server. If you're following along from my previous tutorial, this is our public folder. Let's add a new folder here and call it models, then hit extract. Let's change the GLTF name from scene to relaxedpanda.gltf. Now we need to tell our A entity about this model. Type GLTF model equals then the location of the model. For me, this is public models relaxedpanda.gltf. Now we close the entity. The marker closes, but before we close the scene, we probably need a camera that can see this marker we set up earlier. In A-frame, the device's camera is considered an entity too. To put the camera in the scene, just type A entity camera. If we ran the app right now, it would alert us that we can't access the camera because we're not using a secure connection, HTTPS. To solve this problem, we need to add keys, a certificate, and have our server offer them to devices accessing it. I will provide the basic steps to get keys here. For more information and how to install OpenSSL, check out my video on setting up HTTPS for your local network server linked in the description. Go to the folder with your app.js in it and right click. Create a new folder named keys. Open the keys folder and then select the path in the title bar. Open a new PowerShell window and type CD, then paste the rest in quotes. Hit enter. To create the key, type OpenSSL Gen RSA hyphen L server key 2048. Now create the certificate signing request by typing OpenSSL REQ hyphen new hyphen key server dot key hyphen out server dot c s r provide responses to the requests they don't have to be accurate if this is only for your local network and create the certificate using this command open ssl x509 hyphen req hyphen days 365 hyphen in server.csr hyphen sign key server dot key hyphen l server dot crt now that our certificate and keys are set up we just need to update our server to supply them open our app.js file we're going to add two new constants, one for HTTPS and one for FS or file system. After app.get, let's add another constant called options. This is where we'll store the location for our keys and certificates. In options, add a line for key. Using this fs.readfilesync method and giving it the location of our key, then do the same thing for our certificate. Last, let's replace app.listen with https.createServer. Let's give that HTTPS server our options, which has the key and certificate, as well as our app constant, which hosts our express.js services. Now that this is set up, it's time to see that panda. With our Windows Defender firewall off, let's run node app.js from PowerShell. Let's get our marker ready. You can print this or just pull it up on a screen for testing. You can download the hero marker from my GitHub in the description or do like I am here and use Google Images. Now, on your phone, type in https colon forward slash forward slash then your IP address then colon and your port number in this case 
3000. It will alert you that the connection is not private. That is okay. Click show details and view this website. Allow access to your camera. Allow access to your motion sensor. Now we're here. Together, we brought a cuddly panda into our environment with augmented reality.